Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you. We have an overflow crowd, uh, which is awesome. Um, originally, we were going to do this outside, but the weather pushed it in. But I think um, it's kind of fun to actually sit in the new part of the new space. And um, so I'd like to welcome you all today. Uh, my name is Jim Finelli, for those of you that uh, don't know me, and uh, my day job is a market director for the Bank of America Private Bank, uh, 43 years actually, I've been there, and um, my other day job is a trustee, the bank trustee at the Hillston Museum, which I have been for the last 22 years. So um, I've uh, seen lots of things happen, not happen, and now really happen here. So um, this is an exciting day. Uh, I would like to recognize and thank the uh, governor for being here. He'll be making some remarks uh, shortly. And um, we have some other guest speakers, including Joe Gianni, president of Bank of America of Greater Hartford, uh, who has uh, got some great news for us as well. But it's really a historic day here today. We've uh, spent many years working on this plan. And I'm just going to, for just a moment, those of you who aren't familiar with Theodate's will, um, you know, provides for a static collection in the house and us not allowing us to bring anything in or lend anything out. And for years, we've been wanting to do something here with exhibition space and teaching space. And this barn renovation, carriage barn renovation, um, is really the culmination of a lot of work on a lot of people's part over the last 20 years. So um, you're going to hear more about it from some of the other speakers. Uh, but I will tell you, it's just about nine months ago, we started this construction in the middle of COVID. And in nine months, we are almost 100% complete, which is really amazing. I give... <laughs> the staff at Hillstead and Anna Swinborn, our executive director, has worked countless hours to make this happen. You know, we've worked with the DECD, we've worked with engineers, we've worked with, you know, you name it. It's not been an easy project. Uh, it's an old house. Things always happen when you, you renovate your house that come up. And we've successfully navigated this and we're almost 100% there, Anna. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're very excited about it. Um, so it was approximately probably three years ago when we started this sort of fundraising campaign of $6.9 million uh, capital and endowment campaign. And we're publicly launching it today. It's been a private launch to date. And so bringing art to life is our, is our capital campaign, capital and endowment campaign. And this was the construction phase, which I said has been in full swing and we're just about done. Um, we're done with the construction. We still need to raise more money. So about <laughs> 4.3 million went to fund the renovation of this space. And you'll, if you haven't gotten a chance afterwards, I'm sure you will, you'll be able to walk around and take a look at it. Um, and an additional 2.6 million uh, for the endowment to support the ongoing expenses associated uh, with this space, which again, we're gonna have art from around the world. Right, Anna? Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I do want to make a comment. There's one board member who's not here who's actually in Denmark right now. And we're deeply grateful to Bill Watson, uh, board member, longtime board member, who chaired the private phase of this capital and endowment campaign and has spoken to many of you and, um, and has been very successful in sort of what we call the private phase of the campaign. Bill's rolling off the board as of tonight, I believe. Our annual meeting's at 5 o'clock. Uh, but his foresight and commitment has led to really the success of this, uh, this construction project and the fundraising efforts. But uh, Bill is passing the baton, and I know that Marie O'Brien is right here, Marie O'Brien, who Marie and I have worked together on various things probably for 30 years, if not more. And I don't want to say more than that, but um, it's at least 30 years. Um, and so she'll be taking over for Bill. She already has. And uh, Marie, as you know, is an in innovative leader in both the private and public sector, and so we're excited to have her doing that. We're also deeply grateful to past administrations of the state of Connecticut, and 
Um, Mrs. Malloy is here sort of representing uh, our prior governor who was very instrumental in uh, our initial grant that sort of got this going a couple, few years ago now. So um, thank you for being here. As well as uh, our other board members that are here, this has not been uh, a one-person effort, it's not been a staff effort, it's been a team effort on, on all parts. So um, I do want to thank Anna specifically. Anna has gotten this ship going, uh, everybody rowing in all directions, and um, we've gotten ourselves to this point, and we're very excited about the next chapter. So um, we're going to continue on. Um, I do want to actually turn this over now to, again, thank you for being here, but Julie Karmelik from SHPO, the Historic Tax Credit Administrator with the uh, Connecticut State Historic Preservation Office. So. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words. I'm up here with Tom Dorsey from Eversource Energy, who invested in the tax Historic Rehab Tax Credit Program. Would you like to say a few words before I begin? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's pretty easy to get money out of Eversource when Marie O'Brien calls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marie, we will certainly do that for you. Uh, we take great pride in our participation in the tax credit program that, she, that Julie administers, and uh, we do these kind of events all over the state of Connecticut, and it's a great thing for the Connecticut that we have this historic tax credit. I work, I have a company, my company is in New, New Hampshire and Massachusetts, and they're all saying, how is it that um, you guys give away so much money? And I said, damn good lobbying. <laughs> but what a wonderful thing to be here today with all of you. Thank you. Sure. So I'm just going to say a few words on behalf of the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, first, we'd like to congratulate the staff of the Hillstead Museum and the board on the completed renovation. It looks great and I'm so excited to take a tour later. And the SHPO is very happy to have played a role in this rehabilitation through the use of the Historic Rehab Tax Credit. For those of you who don't know, the State Historic Rehabilitation Tax Credit Program is a financial incentive that provides 25% of the eligible expenditures associated with the historic rehabilitation. In the past year, the SHPO has issued vouchers for projects totaling over $167 million in eligible expenditures. Vouchers were issued to projects all over the state, including Windsor Locks, Hartford, Norwalk, and Putnam, just to name a few. And the program covers everything from helping create safe, affordable housing to business incubator space, schools, and now national historic landmark cultural institutions. The State Historic Preservation Office is committed to the preservation of the state's valuable historic resources, but we cannot do it alone. It can be difficult to develop a project that builds a sustainable museum for the next century while preserving the character of the historic property. But thanks to Anna and the team at Center Point Architects, this, um, they manage both goals with exceptional results. And we could not be happier to be able to provide at this important financial incentive. So, Professionally, I'm happy to see the renovation come to fruition with the help of the rehab tax credit. And personally, I can't wait to spend the day touring the museum to see all the new exhibit spaces. So thank you very much, and again, congratulations. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Hillstead today on a, 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 a wet but beautiful day, and it's beautiful because of the reason that we're all here. My name's Lavelle Thompson. I'm the president of the Board of Trustees, and it is my singular honor to welcome the governor here today. Um, and actually, I should say to welcome the governor back today because it was uh, almost a year ago um, when you and your wife came and enjoyed an evening uh, from the porch series out on our West Lawn. 
and it is truly um, my heartfelt thanks to you for everything that you did to help this state survive the past year and make it possible for us as an organization to adjust and to adapt and to be able to offer an outdoor space for people to come together and for artists to perform. So I truly appreciate everything that you've done for us and I would like to ask if you'd um, have a few words to say today. Well, it doesn't take much to get me back to Hillstead, I got to tell you. <laughs> I, I remember that two years ago, Eddie and I were just coming in here, that toe tap and Irish uh, band that was going. And you took us on that tour, and it just knocks your socks off. You go in there, I had no idea what to expect. I mean, some of the most amazing works of art. And as you know, I was really taken by that uh, Monet. I mean, I've seen haystacks, but I've never seen that, you know, fishing boat by the sea, 1868, early 20s, one of his first things. I mean, I think people are beginning to rediscover Connecticut a little bit and realize what makes this state so special. You know, this last year was hell. Uh, thankfully, you were <laughs> able to be outside. Fortunately, you were able to keep construction going. You know, it's remarkable, though, that we had more people visit the state of Connecticut last year to our parks and to our beaches and maybe outside here than we've ever had in the history of the state. Uh, I think a lot of people discovered what makes this state so incredibly special. First time in decades, we had many thousands more move into the state than move out of the state. And I think, uh, get ready, because I think you're going to have a lot of visitors this year. And, um, and I think you're ready for it. You're ready for it uh, thanks to the good work of um, the folks who were able to do this work right in the middle of uh, the pandemic. Thanks to the good work of Eversource. Thanks to the good work of uh, Bank of America. Thanks to the good work of Dan Malloy, Kathy, and helping to get this thing going on a serious way. And you're also doing something really important. I was just told by uh, Mary that we've gotten through this COVID pretty well. And uh, we have the highest vaccination rate and lowest infection rate in the country. I say thanks to each and every one of you. But we still have some healing to do. And uh, that involves, uh, in particular, the kids. Our schools are more likely to be open than really anybody else's schools in the region. But uh, we still had 100,000 kids that, you know, didn't see their friends and didn't see a classroom. Just COVID, fear, anxiety, multi-generational. And that's why uh, starting in uh, 10 days, we're, two weeks, we're going to have, um, you know, free learning camps going all across the state. And uh, including right here, I was told, right? Right here. <laughs> and make it fun. Make it fun for these kids. We've done a lot of Zoom. We can do STEM. We'll catch up. But make it fun for these kids as well. And the other thing I love about it is a lot of kids who maybe wouldn't otherwise get exposed to the amazing things here at this museum, you're going to give them that opportunity and that exposure. And for that, I'm really thankful. And I got to tell you, we have 250 other programs going on across the state just to help our young people get back on their feet uh, and uh, make sure they're ready to go come September. I think we're ready to go. I think this state, uh, we've been poised for a while. We're like a coil that's ready to unspring at any moment right now. And I think that's what you see here. And I just want to thank each and every one of you, A, for what you've done over this last year and a half and taken the lead, and what you've done on behalf of the museum here. It's remarkable. And I, I just got to tell you one last thing. This Theodate, she sounds amazing just reading about her. I mean, I don't know, you, the Lusitania is going down and the uh, rescue boat's like this and she decides to dive overboard. She think that's safer. Anyway, she's a remarkable woman, I got to tell you. And I love what she was able to create here. Thanks, everybody. Love being back. How do you ever follow that, right? <laughs> I'm Joe Gianni. I'm uh, president for Bank of America here in Greater Hartford. Thanks for this uh, opportunity. Partnership. Before I turn to the Hillstead, I'd just like to say, on behalf of the 2,700 employees, Bank of America employees here in Connecticut, Governor, we truly appreciate the countless hours you and your team work to keep Connecticut residents informed and safe during the past 18 months. Your leadership was stellar. 
So please accept our sincere gratitude. So I stand in partnership with the state, and it's special to be here at the Hillstead to bear witness to the completion of its carriage barn renovation and the public launch of the Bringing to Arts to Life, the Hillstead's capital and endowment campaign. Partnership. When any of us are asked to engage in a not-for-profit, we often hear the phrase, give your time, your talent, and your treasure. I'll tell you how all of those things are evident in Bank of America's relationship with the Hillstead. Time. Our legacy and the Hillstead's legacy is intertwined. In fact, we've been the trustee bank for the Hillstead since its establishment in 1946. Talent. You heard from Bank of America's Jim Finelli, who served as the Hillstead's bank trustee and secretary for 22 years. Anna. You couldn't have a better representative from our company. Unless you're talking about Jill Hutensky, both Jim and I would uh, readily admit to that. I'd like to thank Jill, not only for her work on this, but for her deep understanding of the not-for-profit community and the sensitivity and engagement for all our community needs in Greater Hartford. Thank you, Jill. That brings us to treasure. I'm delighted to announce a significant capstone gift of $500,000 from Bank of America, which is the largest corporate gift in the museum's history. With this support, the Hillstead is well positioned to continue to be a thriving home for arts, culture, and education, as well as adding significant capacity to serve as an ever-expanding diverse audience with compelling exhibitions and a robust schedule of public programs throughout the year. Art has long inspired Bank of America's philanthropic practices in a profound and meaningful way. For decades, we have been committed to the region's dynamic arts and culture scene, we are particularly proud to witness the Hillstead's growth into a nationally recognized epicenter for the arts and education. This transformative gift underscores the institution's key role in our community and helps to ensure the Hillstead's extraordinary legacy and our partnership in that legacy. Thank you, Anna. I'm gonna turn it over to Executive Director and CEO, Anna Swinborn. everyone. Thank you. For, uh, Mike, I'm tall, remember? <laughs> uh, sorry. Sometimes I kick off my shoes. I'm not going to do it here. <laughs> Thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Swinborn. For those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I hope I can meet you at some point today. Um, I'm trained as an art historian, which means I don't make art. I analyze it. Like a machine, I figure out how it works. I take it apart figure out why certain pieces speak to us and why others don't. The beautiful thing about this type of skill is when you master it, you can analyze anything, anywhere, anytime. From stepping into the role as director at Hillstead, I've had my sights and my thinking honed on it. Why is it so special? Why does it inspire such devotion? And here are my conclusions. Buried deeply at the heart of this institution is a magnet for obstacles, which shouldn't be a surprise <laughs> because we are, after all, the brainchild of a woman who faced obstacles her whole life. She ate obstacles for breakfast. <laughs> right next to that magnet is a capacity for magic. I've seen countless times evidence of this magic. A gala dinner on the West Lawn with no tent, 150 people arriving, and storm clouds, woo, everywhere. And they break, and in their wake is not one rainbow, but two, double rainbow that frames the house. Every workday for the past 10 months, I've had the joy of hanging out with two really cool guys, Chuck Muller, our architect, and Joe Suznecki, our project manager. They both have the same birthday. We had a great party. 
Anyway, I'm convinced that it's this identity, this combination of attributes that has enabled us to do what we did. We entered that dark tunnel of the pandemic. We were the trifecta of masterpieces that Hillstead is, the beautiful natural landscape that is a masterpiece, the masterpieces made by artists inside, and then the skin between the two is Theodate's architectural masterpiece. And when we emerged out the other side of the pandemic, we weren't just intact, we were better. We had created a whole new world of possibility for things that we can do here now. And when I say we, I don't mean me and my colleagues, my incredible board members, I mean all of us. It's incredibly overwhelming for me to be standing up here in front of you and seeing in every face your contribution. So I'd like you to indulge me for one second and play a game of pretend. I'm not here standing in front of you. I'm in the chair next to you. I'm shaking your hand warmly and I'm looking at you in the eyes and I'm saying thank you. You are an inextricable part of what we accomplished. We couldn't have done it without you. This success is ours to share. So what we're gonna do in this space, we are gonna bring it alive with exhibitions, with programs. We very, very, very wisely made this a multi-purpose space. Performances, lectures, workshops. Jim Finelli's gonna learn how to tap dance in here. <laughs> he already knows. <laughs> We even actually ordered up the weather so we could show all of you what we now know, which is we finally, finally, finally have a space where we can do things and bring people together year round, despite the time of year, despite the weather, in here together. So I wanna thank all of you and I want to invite you all to stick with us. This next chapter is going to be exciting you shall see marvels. The first one, I'd like to invite the governor to cut the ribbon for us. Right here? Right now? Right now. Right now. You are tall. I am tall. I'm tall. And you're right here. So I make it even harder. Thank you. So please join us. We have refreshments in, we don't even know what to call it yet. It used to be called the Drive Shed, but its nickname now is the Glass Room. Uh, not to be confused with Theodate's cousin, um, the architect of the Glass House down in New Canaan, Philip Johnson. Um, however, we do have refreshments. And if you want to mill about the space, there are many of us here on Hillstead staff that can answer your questions. And we'd love to share our ideas and thinking. Thank you for being here.